You conclude that uh, the management issue for American policy in the years ahead in the Middle East is going to be this recalibration of the balance between Sunni and Shia. It's very clear that, the, uh, that um, many in the Arab world see I Iran as a threat or the rise of Iran as a challenge. The governments do, uh, many of the clerics do, and um, uh, so the rise of Iran is connected to the rise of, uh, uh, to what happened in Iraq. It's connected to Hezbollah's power in Lebanon. Hezbollah is very important in this because the 2006 war against Israel went to the heart of this challenge. You had a Shia force take on uh, Israel and perhaps do better at war with Israel than all of these other Arab armies. It gave a sense that what Hezbollah and Iran were saying and doing was that if the proof of power is how you perform against Israel, that they're doing better than the Arabs, that they will take care of the Palestinians the way that the Sunni governments have not, that they will uh, be able to stand up in a manner that the Arab governments have not, that the Arab governments have not thrown in the towel. And when the Syrian president taunted the Arab rulers saying you're only half men. It went to this whole point. And we saw something very bizarre happen, uh, which is, you know, as soon as the war started, a group of Arab governments came out and accused Hezbollah of, of uh, adventurism. The United States claimed that they had given green light to America and Israel to destroy Hezbollah, that they claimed that Hezbollah was the cat paw of Iran. You never before had uh, Arabs break ranks in the middle of a fight against Israel. You, all, you had a sense that the Sunnis were seeing that Hezbollah's performance was going to add to the Iraq effect. The aftershocks of Iraq are not settled. In other words, uh, Iraq created, uh, a, a, an in, it, it disturbed the balance between Shia and Sunni populations in the Arab world, but also disturbed the balance between the Arabs as a whole and Iran. And that is still playing itself out. And so long as th this is playing itself out, it means that uh, you really don't know what the final shape in the Middle East is. And therefore, our policies have to be cognizant that we're not dealing with the Middle East of 2002, that we're dealing with the Middle East that is still dealing with what happened in Iraq. So the uh, relative power of Iran and the Arabs is not settled yet. The, the power distribution within the Arab world is not settled yet because still the fate of Iraq is not known and still the fate of Lebanon is not known. And we still have to see how Lebanon and Iraq will continue to play out in Bahrain, in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait, uh, and the like. So to the, that extent, uh, U.S. foreign policy has still got to deal with the consequences of what it did in Iraq. Uh, and uh, there is also another dimension to this Shia revival, which is at the popular level, and around actually the person of Ayatollah Sistani, which is the opening of the shrine cities of Iraq and the, uh, the whole experience of Shias getting empowered in Iraq has caused a revival of identity and religious identity and uh, 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 an attachment to the shrine cities of Iraq among the Shias everywhere. Now, you know, Ayatollah Sistani has become uh, the single most popular ayatollah in the Muslim world. He's the most popular ayatollah in Iran. He's the most popular ayatollah in Lebanon. Politically, maybe the Islamic Republic or Hezbollah rule, but the majority of Shias give their taxes to Ayatollah Sistani and follow him. So you all, actually, you don't have a political pan-Shiism, but at the religious level, there's almost now, you, you have a single authority, a single dominant authority. And this now traffic of pilgrims to Iraq, the millions who go and come back, and the, the effect that that pilgrimage has on them is, is, is showing a kind of uh, revival of Shiism at the cultural level, which we don't know how it might uh, manifest itself in the years to come. I've been speaking with Professor Vali Nasser, Professor of International Affairs at Tufts University and Senior Adjunct Fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. On behalf of the National September 11th Memorial and Museum, I'm Clifford Shannon.